Hello, my name is Josh Scoggin with 68, and you're watching Under the Gun TV. So let's start out, let's talk about the band and the new record. Uh, how did you guys first come together? What's the deal with the sudden splurge from you, you put your first show at South By and now you've got a record coming out July? Tell me about the process so far. Um, well, uh, it, was, it was all very fast paced, very impulsive, uh, which I enjoy. Um, yeah, basically, the Chariot, uh, we ended it on, on about halfway through Warp Tour, uh, which was the summertime. Um, and we didn't go public with it until afterwards, but uh, we knew about halfway through. And uh, the day it got sort of confirmed that we were going to do that, the next day I put in a phone call to uh, a longtime producer and friend, Matt Goldman, who's done all the Chariot records and will probably continue doing records uh, with me forever. Uh, unless he gets over it, I guess. Um, <laughs> but as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I put in a phone call to him and said, hey, I want to book um, the studio in December. And he said, oh, okay, uh, the cherry, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, actually, we just called it a night. Um, he goes, oh, well, then what is this for? And I literally said, I have no idea. But uh, <laughs> since the studio time is booked, I'll, have to, I'll, I'll know by then. So that's been very much in a nutshell the mentality of everything it was um you know we we <clears throat> we put up a video online um on on youtube uh dot com uh and within i don't know a, a few weeks of that going on going up um we had a call uh to go on tour with uh chiodos uh which we are finished with now um but you know, I, I, there was still songs to be written for the record. You know, we, we didn't have, you know, those it was still, the, the question of how we were going to pull it off live was completely still up in the <laughs> air. The enough. Chariot's fi Farewell Tour ended like a few, uh, sometime in the middle or end of November. So I literally went <clears throat> from there, hung out at home a couple of days, went to the studio a week early, set up a, a small studio in in a room that they don't use and wrote uh the entire album uh that week so um i, I had the two songs that we put on on the seven inch and other than that um you know i locked myself in a room ate pizza and drank coffee and uh wrote about you know four or five songs we started recording december 1st and Basically, you know, our, our drummer would listen to the song that morning, and we'd have it recorded that night. And cool. then when everybody else called it a night and went to sleep, I'd go in there, lock myself in the room, and, and try to stay ahead of the game. And uh, and I enjoy that process. I enjoy that. Uh, I feel like I work well, uh, maybe better, under the gun, under pressure, under... Uh, under the gun. Under the gun. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> so a rampant theme that I've, that I've noticed with your music... Is you know the whole concept of minimalism, obviously conflicting with the overkill of the way you write your songs. So, mm. it, would you say your music in itself is almost kind of like a dichotomy? Like, how do those two things interact? To me, things are more pleasant when they're either, like you just put it, very minimalistic or very overkill. You know, I, I enjoy, you know, when a band has no choruses. You know, I enjoy when you only hear something one time. You know, in the chariot, the the mentality was sort of. If you want to hear something again, play the song again, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so I enjoy that, but I also enjoy sometimes, you know, uh, playing, uh, you know, one note, you know, forty-two times, you know, which is mm -hmm. uh, a song that we had on a song called Evan Perks. I mean, <laughs> we just hit one note pretty much forty-two times and called it a song. Um, so you know, I enjoy that sort of. Thing thought process behind it you know and um and uh even live and everything being very minimalistic just having two guys and the whole idea of how much noise can t can two guys make um minimal being two guys but 
but overkill being that I, I have enough equipment on stage for for five piece band um i have two full stacks and and a bass rig you know so um so that's fun uh and obnoxious and loud mm-hmm. and you know uh very enjoyable for me and people that like it i think they enjoy it people that don't like it probably hate it because <laughs> it's really loud <laughs> but you enjoy that contrast though as opposed to having five guys you've got two and you're making all this music how different is the stage presence compared to when you were performing with a full band? The thing that happened with the chariot is something that I, I believe it, it was a magical moment for then. And there's nothing, uh, I would never want to try and recreate that, nor could I. And so I feel like with a two piece, um, there's a whole new set of things uh, The where, where there were five people on stage going bonkers. Now, you know, there's just two guys and <clears throat> and and you know I have the stress and the the sort of chaos of trying to keep all my pedals in order and and hitting the right pedal and and you know not uh, making it all work. And so part of that chaos that you enjoy is the imperfection, is the maybe not being <coughs> able being being able to reproduce exactly what it sounded like in the studio, but just because. Because that's part of your inspiration, the imperfection, right? Um, you can call it imperfection. I call it the human element. Um, okay. <laughs> maybe I'm old school, but I felt like with rock and roll, it was supposed to be played by humans, you know, and yeah. and, uh, and it was supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to hear the human error and the human element and the imperfections because we are humans. Um, I know robots have taken over, um, <laughs> but uh, it, to me, I don't know how other bands work. I don't know what they do. But I think sometimes they write a record and then they spend a year and a half, maybe two years, trying to duplicate that or, or replicate that record. Um, with with everything I've been involved with, I feel like it's flip-flopped. I, I enjoy what we do live. And for me, playing live is why I started a band in, in the first place. And, and I enjoy the live show. So I try to take as much of that magic as I can and put it into... An album. Right, so let's talk about In Humor and Sadness. Uh, explain the whole track title situation. I know there was a bit of a last minute change. What was the thought process behind that? I'm not into the idea of spoon feeding, you know, making everything easy, making everything uh, spoon fed, you know, formulaic, you know, A plus B equals dollar sign. It, it, like, you know, because I'm a fan of music. I, I still enjoy music. And I, I'm I have much more respect for bands that look at me as a human being versus a dollar bill, um, a a pointless dollar bill at that, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, just one of many millions, you know. All that to say that my part of that formula, one tiny part of that is, is, you know, you have a chorus that's catchy and and you put your, you name the song that. So that when you talk about this song, it comes up in my head, I remember it, now it's stuck in my head. It's all part of the system. It's all branding. Part of, yeah, it's all the the same. You're a dollar sign, and that's it. Not even an important dollar sign. Like I said, hun- thousands of people could stop being dollar signs, and they would barely notice. the The naming of the songs was very much just sort of a. I wanted to deconstruct that whole mentality. I, I don't want to have a chorus and then, and then you, and then name the song that. You know, I've never done that, so it's, mm-hmm. it's an easy you know, process, but I like the idea of not even having song titles, like, and I like the fact that the Chariot always had, uh, s- you know, somewhat of a smart audience. Um, I'm sure there was a couple people here and there, but for the most part, nobody was like, yeah, love them, they're heavy, done. You know yeah, what I mean? It's like, yeah. it was more to it than that. So what's going to happen when you play shows and people are in the crowd yelling, play track three, no, it, play tra- track seven? Exactly. It'll be brilliant. <laughs> people won't know what to call it, and that's the, exactly the, that's good. Who knows what to call it? You know what I mean? I, I don't. I, I wish it was all blank, just nothing, just, just spaces. You know, because at the end of the day, it's like I, I don't know. I, I enjoy that. What do you call a song? What do you call it? You know, uh, I, I went through a phase where I named everything like you know four sentences long, and and I enjoyed that as well because it's like you can't yell that. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just yell that like super simple like play this song, boom, you're done. You know, it's like if they yell it, they're committing to something, and and, <laughs> and that's uh, admirable. You know. How did that tour go? Was it a little <clears throat> daunting going from, like, headlining these crazy pack shows with the Chariot, and now all of a sudden you're kind of on the opposite end of the bill? Is, is it an adjustment <clears throat> process, or how does that work? Yeah, it, it was super 
cool. Uh, when you say headlining crazy pack shows with the chariot, keep in mind that was the farewell tour. So in contrast to that, um, yeah, it was crazy going from, I, I just talked to a guy who was at the, uh, Michigan show and Michigan was the first place we played with Chiodos and it was also a place we played on uh, the, the stage itself was a place we played on the farewell tour so it was hilarious to go from from everyone going you know uh, ham uh, and us headlining uh, to everyone staring at us not having a clue but, and rightfully so we only had two songs out at, at best you know so yeah. and these are kids that were here for Chiodos so they, they probably don't know who we are and so um, they were just staring blankly uh, some with intrigue uh, some with you know okay let's <laughs> okay guys let's move it along so what's the deal with the tour plans well we will be on tour with a band called Listener in July um and uh, he's a longtime friend. He was on uh, one of the records uh, the Chariot put out. Um, from there, we go to do um, Heavy Fest in the UK, uh, and some dates in mainland Europe, and then uh, a couple dates in Russia. So, um, and then after that, hopefully things will fall into place, and we'll keep busy. I read a quote where you said that this record and the beginning of this band is just just the tip of the iceberg. So how? Mm -hmm extreme and abstract and obscure can can two guys really make one record i don't know i'm, I'm still finding that out <laughs> I, i'm i'm uh i'm it's it's always evolving and always sort of moving forward so um as i learn about new pedals and new tricks and new things and then as i get some money to buy these things and try them out and as i learn more things i mean it's it's always hopefully going to be growing and learning and and i mean who knows what the future holds as far as how abstract and obscure we can make things um this is josh goggin with 68 thank you for watching under the gun